Welcome to yet another video on SRID Cloud. In this video, I want to talk about VRF route leaking between two VRFs using the route target imports and exports technique. So what I have is um, a topology of three routers to simulate uh, a data center environment that is connected to a customer environment. In the data center environment, there are a couple of routers one the middle router otherwise called the edge router and the left router which is can be otherwise called the core router inside the data center and customers um, data center is um, on the right side and it has a route a right side uh, router on it so let's get started uh, looking at the topology you can see the left router is connected to the middle one and the middle router is connected to the right one uh, as well and there are a couple of loopback IP addresses on the left and right routers this is for the sake of simplicity otherwise I have to put another switch on either side and then attach some computing resources around them and so on which is beyond the scope of this uh, um, this presentation so the left router on the left is connected to the middle with an IP uh, network called 172.16.1.0 and the middle router is connected to the right router with a IP a network 10.140.12.0 network and uh, IP addresses are derived from these networks and assigned to the interfaces on all these three routers the intention here is to let the traffic flow from VRF A all the way to the customer VRF and even though they belong to two different VRFs, we are going to make it to work um, with uh, the route target exports and imports. There are no VRFs defined on the left and right routers. The VRFs are defined only in the middle router. So now let's get started with the running configurations. Looking at the left router, it's very simple. There is a loopback interface. 1111 and there is a gigabit ethernet 1 interface connecting to the middle router and it has IP address 172.16.1.2 and there is a default route to 172.16.1.1 so that means anything that left router cannot understand will be sent over to the middle router for uh, further routing or consumption similarly on the right router there is a loopback 3333 and the gigabit ethernet 1 connected to the middle router has an IP 101410 sorry 101412.2 and there is a default route through uh, 101412.1 which is IP address on the middle router connected to the right router so with these let us take a look at the configuration in the middle router So first of all, there are a bunch of VRFs defined. Customer VRF on the right and VRF A on the left interfaces. And both these VRFs have route distinguishers 65,000 colon 3 and 65,000 colon 1. This is to identify these two VRF uh, later on in the uh, MPBGP configuration. The route targets are exported and imported vice versa in these two VRFs. The 65,100 3 is exported from customer VRF and imported in the VRF A VRF. Similarly, 65,100 1 is exported from VRF A VRF and imported into the customer VRF. And looking at it further, I'm going to skip all this cryptography stuff. The um, Gigabit Ethernet 1, which is connected to the left router, is under VRF A, uh, VRF, and it has IP address 172.16.11. And the Gigabit Ethernet 2 interface on the right is connected to the right router, and it is under Customer VRF, and it carries IP address 10.140.12.1. 
and now here is the mpbgp um, configuration there is a router id ass assigned to it which can be anything and there are a couple of uh, address family ipv4 vrf paragraphs one for customer and one for vrfa and the redistribute connected and the redistribute static will take care of distributing the routes from vrfa to the customer and then customer to vrfa and so on and there are a couple of um, static routes defined um, on vrfa a route is defined to 3333 via 10 1 which is the ip address on the right router and one 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 route to one 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 on vrf um, uh, customer through one seventy to sixteen one two which is the ip address on the left router since the route targets are exported and imported we can make this kind of uh, cross uh, route configurations because 3333 3, 3, 3 actually belongs to the right side which on the middle router belongs to the customer um, vrf and similarly 1111 belongs to the left router which according to the middle router configuration belongs to the vrf a vrf but with the route target import and imports and exports we are able to uh, connect these two uh, crisscross and that's it so now let us take a look at the um, route on the middle uh, router this is a global route there is not global routing table there's nothing in it as expected and show ip route vrf vrf a contains quite a few things so first of all it contains the uh, so we are now looking at the uh, routing table of the vrf a obviously it contains 1111 and it also contains 3333 due to the static route that we defined but most importantly the 10 140 which is on the right side the customer vrf side is now injected into the vrf a routing table remember we are looking at vrf a routing table and everything else is as usual the 170.16.00 network that belongs to the vrfa on the middle router and it is directly connected and local uh, to this vrf table similarly looking at the customer vrf routing table we can see the 1111 is uh, connected due to the static route that we added and obviously the 3333 that belongs to the customer site is also added here but most importantly the 1701610 which belongs to the vrf a is now injected into the customer uh, routing table and we are looking at the customer routing table at the moment so now let us do some uh, testings let us go to the left router and try to ping the 3333 which belongs to the customer on the right side and it goes through and now let's go to the right router and then try to ping 1111 which is under vrfa from middle router's perspective and it works so this is how you can share the routing uh, between two vrfs and you can make the traffic flow across conditionally so i hope you um I hope you understood this uh, configuration and uh, enjoyed watching this video and I will produce a lot more videos in near future on various other topics and until then have a wonderful evening or day or wherever you are bye for now.